Hi gang, I'm my radar meteorologist Matt Capucci. More than 1,000 tornadoes touch down in the United States every year. In fact, the U.S. is the tornado capital of the world. But did you know that tornadoes have been reported to glow in the dark or touch down during snowstorms? Let's break down 10 of the most surprising things you may have never heard about tornadoes. By the way, if you're joining us on YouTube, be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Tornado season is coming up and we'll be with you every step of the way. Fact number one, tornadoes have occurred in all 50 states. It's true. Every state in the U.S. has reported at least one tornado. Alabama, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Texas top the charts, with tornadoes a rarity west of the Rockies. But even California and the Pacific Northwest occasionally get them. We're also learning more about tornadoes up there, too. On October 14, 2016, the National Weather Service in Portland, Oregon, issued 10 tornado warnings, twice as many in one morning as they'd issued in the previous 18 years. Two tornadoes touched down, including an EF2 in the coastal town of Manzanita. The deadliest tornado to ever touch down in the Pacific Northwest occurred on April 5, 1972, when an F3 carved through Portland. These photos from the Columbian depict the damage that occurred as a result. At least six people were killed in the storm. Even Alaska has recorded tornadoes, although only two of them since record keeping began in 1950. A brief, weak funnel snaked its way to the surface in Sandpoint, Alaska, along the Aleutian chain on July 25, 2005. Number 2. Almost all tornadoes in the Northern Hemisphere spin counterclockwise, but a very select few, maybe only 1 or 2 percent, rotate clockwise. It all comes down to the Earth's rotation. Tornadoes are way too small to experience a Coriolis force or feel the Earth's rotation, but the broader environment does. That means parent low pressure systems all spin counterclockwise, and that most rotating supercell thunderstorms embedded within those broader lows do as well. Supercells are responsible for the strongest tornadoes. Once in a while, you can have non-mesocyclonic tornadoes, or twisters not born from cloud-based rotation, that spin up from the ground clockwise. That's not terribly rare. Getting a clockwise spinning supercell tornado is rare, however, but it does happen. We call these clockwise spinning tornadoes anticyclonic. Some anticyclonic tornadoes result from extreme vorticity or spin in the lower atmosphere surrounding big tornadoes. You can have an anticyclonic tornado form and spin around a larger cyclonic tornado. These are called satellite vortices or satellite tornadoes. An EF2 strength anticyclonic satellite formed southeast of the EF5 monstrous El Reno, Oklahoma tornado in 2013. Something similar happened in Iowa in June of 1972 and was well documented by researchers. Even more remarkable is the tornado that hit West Bend, Wisconsin on the early morning hours of April 4th, 1981. It formed a low top squall line and caught forecasters off guard, but killed three people and rapidly caused EF4 damage. It's the strongest and only known violent anticyclonic tornado to date. That takes us to number three, how big tornadoes can get. Let's revisit that El Reno, Oklahoma tornado of May 31st, 2013. It was 2.6 miles wide. That's the biggest tornado ever confirmed globally. The tornado formed near a low pressure triple point where desert dry air, extremely moist and unstable tropical air, and cooler air from the northwest all met. Over the course of roughly 40 minutes, the giant tornado would claim eight lives, including those of legendary tornado researchers. It peaked at, get this, 4,576 yards wide. That's almost 46 football fields laid end to end, more than 2.5 miles. Forecasters had to issue a dire tornado emergency. While the tornado is officially listed in the books as an EF3, research with the Mobile Doppler Radar Unit found evidence of winds approaching 300 miles per hour. However, though it likely contained EF5 winds, the rural nature of the area meant only EF3 damage could be found. On April 12, 2020, a massive 2.25 mile wide tornado swallowed areas near Bassfield, Mississippi. It was the third widest tornado on record and the biggest in the state. Six people died. The blue blob here represents debris from the town carried aloft. The damage signatures from the storm were eerily reminiscent of El Reno. Number four, tornadoes are like low pressure vacuums. Think about how your vacuum cleaner works. It creates a void of air pressure inside, so the atmosphere outside pushes air into it. That's what creates suction. Tornadoes are the same. But how much is this air pressure deficit inside a tornado? It depends on the strength of the twister. Air flows from high pressure to low pressure, which is what generates wind in the first place. A bigger drop off in air pressure would form stronger winds. 
On June 24, 2003, tornado researcher Tim Samaras recorded a 100 millibar drop inside a tornado near Manchester, South Dakota. Here's a trace showing that abrupt drop off about 78 seconds in. That's equivalent to more than a tenth of the atmosphere's air pressure vanishing. Imagine if all the air in the lowest two-thirds of a mile of the atmosphere just disappeared. That missing air drives the inward winds. Tornadoes are in something called cyclostrophic balance, which means the inward section by a sharp change in air pressure has to be exactly balanced by the outward push of centrifugal force. We can calculate the theoretical air pressure inside a tornado, but directly observing it is a different story. Number five, tornadoes often come in families. Most tornadoes come from cyclic supercells or rotating supercells that undergo cycles of rotation. Long track supercells might have half a dozen or more cycles lasting 20 to 30 minutes each. Some supercells travel 400 miles or more over the course of eight plus hours. Each one could produce a tornado. Sometimes during a cycle handoff, one tornado withers as the other touches down. During the May 3rd and 4th 1999 tornado outbreak in Oklahoma, a whopping 63 tornadoes touched down. One of them was an F5 that raised much of Moore, Oklahoma. However, the tornadoes came from only eight individual thunderstorms. Each storm was a prolific cycler though. Here you can see all those hooks sliding across the landscape. Storm A produced 14 tornadoes, including the F5, and Storm B dropped 20. Here's a map showing the tornado's damage paths through the Oklahoma City Metro. This chart also shows their timelines. At some points, up to four tornadoes were on the ground simultaneously. Number six, here's a really weird one. There are reports that a glow-in-the-dark tornado occurred during the Palm Sunday outbreak of April 11, 1963. These twin funnel clouds in Toledo were captured by Jim Wire, a professional photographer. Several eyewitnesses reported the tornadoes to be glowing and even said that fiery balls of light were emanating from the bases of the trunk-like vortices. There have been papers written about that tornado. Simply stated though, we don't really know what was going on. Perhaps ball lightning, perhaps something else. Some publications reported electrical instruments may have recorded a signature of the tornadoes. Unfortunately, this potentially luminous episode may remain a mystery. Now, there were reports of the June 9th, 1953 Worcester, Massachusetts F5 tornado slinging stones at a cement foundation so quickly that they produced static sparks. The Joplin, Missouri F5 tornado of 2011 also had lightning bolts emanating from its vortex. This is likely an area that needs substantial additional research, but it's not impossible that electrical phenomena could accompany some tornadoes. Number seven, snownadoes are a real thing. Yes, actually. Just a few weeks ago, we told you about this, a rare winter water spout that made landfall as a weak tornado during a snow squall in Greece. But on November 23, 2013, a rotating supercell thunderstorm formed at temperatures below freezing in southern Ontario, Canada. It produced snow, a weird hail-like precipitation, and an EF1 tornado. Eyewitnesses recounted a loud sound, shifting winds, and a funnel corroborating the story. There was also damage to the silo commensurate with 90 mile per hour winds at a farm. More recently, we also have this, a photo of a snow tornado from Antonio Chiquito. He captured the mesmerizing shot on February 17, 2019 in Tinian, New Mexico. Temperatures were around 30 degrees and snow showers were present in the area at the time. This appears to have been a landspout tornado or a vortex sucked upwards from the ground and ingested into the parent snow cloud. In other words, not quite mesocyclonic, but still a bona fide snow tornado. They are real things. Number eight, tornadoes can contain multiple smaller whirls. We call these suction spots or subvortices. Many of the strongest tornadoes contain multiple vortices orbiting a common center. They can be responsible for the strongest winds inside a tornado, which counterintuitively actually occur near the tornado's periphery. That's because a 70 mile per hour subvortex rotating around a broader circulation at 100 miles per hour would yield a very narrow strip of extreme 170 mile per hour damage. It also explains why tornado damage can be so erratic. One home might be demolished by a subvortex only a few feet wide, while the other nearby in the neighborhood remains entirely unscathed or untouched. Here are a few cool shots I took of multi-vortex tornadoes during my chases. This dark, vaporous looking one was from Selden, Kansas. On the right is Fort San Texas. See if you can spot evidence of smaller worlds within the larger world. Number nine, tornadoes can drop fish. What goes up must come down, and so if a tornado passes over water, it can suck up fish, frogs, or whatever else lives there. On May 15, 1900, fish fell from the sky during a severe thunderstorm in Olneyville, a neighborhood of Providence, Rhode Island. It was likely from a water spout, and that's happened plenty of times too from tornadoes. 
The Worcester, Massachusetts 1953 tornado dropped a French music box 90 miles to the east near Boston and even left chunks of frozen mattress in the harbor. And on November 16, 2015, a monstrous EF3 tornado in Pampa, Texas hoisted enough corn high into the sky to produce hailstones that encased corn stalks. Oftentimes, we can see debris fall on radar too. Here's debris falling near Atlanta's Hartsfield Jackson International Airport overnight March 25th into the 26th last year during an EF4 tornado in the city of Noonan. And lastly, number 10, tornadoes can occur when it's sunny. It's actually pretty typical. Tornadoes usually form on the backside of supercell thunderstorms, so if you're behind the storm, you'll get a tornado and sunshine simultaneously. That same setup oftentimes makes for rainbows. It's a seemingly apocryphal setup that is actually nothing special scientifically, but seeing it would be very special and would take your breath away. All told, tornadoes are pretty darn cool, but also very dangerous. Tornado season now is upon us, and by the looks of it, could be pretty busy. We'll be keeping you up to date around the clock every step of the way here on My Radar Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and of course, right here in the My Radar app. Stay with us. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa. Xbox and Windows.